Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks, and here today I'm going to be discussing a little bit about the offseason. Now, this is a lot earlier than I anticipated on speaking about the offseason, and I'm sure it's a lot earlier than a lot of you had expected that the Jaguars fans would be starting to talk about the offseason. However, it's not going to be a list of my top uh, QB prospects, my top QB free agents. As a matter of fact, none of those guys are going to be direct upgrades from your boy, Blake Bortles. And unfortunately, me included, I really want a winning quarterback to step in in Blake Bortles' place next year. But unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. And today, I'm going to tell you why. So ladies and gentlemen, I am Treat from BigJReport.com. And this is why the Jaguars will not move away from Blake Bortles in the 2019 season. Now, Blake Bortles has had a terrible season this year and has been the catalyst and the blame for a lot of losses this season. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Tree, there's no way the Jaguars bring this man back. Well, there's a couple of factors as to why that is wrong and why Blake Bortles will be your 2019 starting quarterback as well. So we just got to hope that maybe some front office changes, some coaching changes, or, you know, the people <clears throat> build more around Blake uh, more so than they did this year. The first reason being the draft class this year for quarterbacks is weak. Uh, Justin Herbert, who's currently the number one uh, rated quarterback coming out of college football, who I don't think is very good personally. I've seen him play. Uh, he played Washington State, which is 15 minutes down the way from where I'm from. And, yeah, he didn't do great. And that's <laughs> Washington State's defense is not anything spectacular by any means necessary and he could not do much against them and I don't I just I don't think he's a great quarterback also I don't think uh he's going to be coming out uh in this year's draft I think he's going to end up staying another year in Oregon however if he wants to get drafted high and make a lot of money this is the year to come out because next year's draft class for quarterbacks I think is a lot better I really want Tui from Alabama, I'm literally not even going to attempt, not even going to attempt to say his last name, because I can't, but I think that kid's a winner, and he's coming out of next year's draft class, so I think we should hold off, and next year's draft class as a whole is a lot better. The next best quarterback uh, in this draft class is Will Greer, and none of these guys are ranked in the top 20 in true talent, not one of those quarterbacks. Will Greer, I believe, is sitting at 38 and uh, Justin Herbert is sitting at, I believe, 21-22, somewhere around there. So these quarterbacks, these rookie quarterbacks, <clears throat> both would not come into Jacksonville right now and make an instant impact. I think both of them are going to be, at best, career backups. Now, if they end up being studs and stars in the league, even for the Jags, then you could come back in here and tell me how wrong I was. But as of right now, from what I've seen from the tape, because, you know, now that we're 3-6, and six, I've been doing a lot of draft stuff. So, um, also, if you guys want me to do some, like, draft prospects types of things, I could do that. I think I'm going to do that more towards uh, the offseason, though. So, with that being said, I'm not too impressed with Will Greer or Justin Herbert. If I had to pick one guy that I'm more impressed with than the other, I'd pick Will Greer. But, you know, again, that's like... They're both not going to make the impact that we need in order to make it back to the postseason. So, and I think the front office is going to realize that. And I don't think they're going to end up drafting any quarterback, uh, at least in the first round. They might try to get like a third, fourth, fifth rounder. It would be awesome if they drafted Gardner Minshew. I don't think they will draft Gardner Minshew because that guy's like 26 already. But uh, that would be cool. I really like him. He's doing things good down there in Washington State. Um, he wouldn't fit our system. <laughs> Realistically, Gardner Minshew would not fit our system. But, like I said, none of these kids coming out of the draft, those two being the top two, uh, would make an impact so great that it would neglect Blake Bortles. So I really don't think the Jags are going to be drafting a quarterback uh, this year. And, uh, again, no free agents um, pop out at you this year. No big free agent signings are going to be happening. The number one quarterback 
that's a free agent next year is Tyrod Taylor. And there is some people that wanted Tyrod Taylor, and I don't get it. <laughs> I was about to say I kind of get it, but I really don't. I mean, if you want to give Blake maybe some competition breathing down his neck, I understand it, I guess. But um, there's another guy who's a fan favorite that's a free agent, and that's Teddy Bridgewater. And apparently the Jaguars tried to make a move for him um, via trade with Dante Fowler. So um, that is not necessarily unrealistic, and I think that would be interesting because those two were the top two quarterbacks of their draft class. So... I think that'll be uh, pretty interesting, but you know, that guy's injury prone, um, and we really don't know what he has in him, you know, he's playing, I believe he's a third or second or third stringer for the Saints right now, so you know, you really don't know what you're getting with Teddy Bridgewater, at least with Blake Bortles, you know what you're getting, which is uh, either inconsistent or consistent play, so I mean, that's the way she goes, and trust me, in no way, shape, or form am I just this big, huge Blake Bortles supporter now where I'm like, oh, Blake Bortles is going to take us to the Super Bowl, because if this year has proved anything, Blake Bortles is not the guy that's going to be taking us to the Super Bowl. However, no one in this draft class, no one in this free agency class is going to come in and make that impact, and I think they're going to roll with Blake Bortles, and this is going to be Blake Bortles' team in 2019. As far as 2020 goes, we don't know yet. And no team, obviously, is going to be trading a top-notch quarterback. That's how you win games in the NFL, is you have a top-notch quarterback. No team has a quarterback that they are willing to just give away, and uh, you know, and they'll suffer. You know, There's no one, none of them, no quarterback in this league that is solid and elite or the above-average tier that a team will trade. And that's why I think people are just ridiculous when people are making these these uh trade rumors that we should do you know trading for like Kirk Cousins who just got paid or fucking Drew Brees you know shit like that people living in fantasy land um but one quarterback I I seen that I I don't think this is possible but it kind of kind of you know caught my interest a little bit I was like oh that'd be cool but you know the Seahawks are kind of in full rebuild mode uh, maybe they just want to get a different quarterback. They don't need Russell Wilson. Maybe the Jags trade in for Russell Wilson. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I did see that, and I was like, man, that kind of piques my interest. That kind of that kind of gets my bird fucking whoop, feeling like that. But like I said, no team is going to be trading away their quarterback, their leader, to us because that's their guy, and that's how they win games. You know, they're not going to help us win games by trading their quarterback to us, and, you know, their organization is going to lose games because they traded him um, away. And I don't think Derek Carr is <clears throat> going to be the best option for that either, but I do think he would fit the system pretty well. I just wish he was a little bit more mobile, but, yeah. And also the final, final reason Blake Bortles signed that extension through 2020, and unfortunately what that means is, is he's getting paid all that money. I don't think... Especially with how old school this front office is, I don't think they're going to just, you know, let him go or try and find this direct upgrade if they're paying this guy 16 mil a year, you know, which isn't top-notch quarterback money, but which is still a lot of money and takes up a lot of cap space. So I think they're going to let him go out there and play in 2019. How he will play is still up to be debated. If it's anything to go by his last five years, then we are in for a hell of a ride. So... You know, with that being said, I really think Blake Bortles is going to be the Jaguars quarterback still in the 2019 season. And that was why the Jaguars will stick with Blake Bortles through the 2019 season. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous and you want to donate, go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Tree Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Devs are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.